Hello everyone, and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans, Killer Toy Reviews. It's been a hot minute since I've done a video with, like, actual voiceover, so I apologize for that. But I did have this massive box come in the other day, and I wanted to go ahead and do an unboxing video for you guys right here and right now because it has got some very exciting stuff in it. A fellow collector was looking to get out of the game, so he was letting go of some amazing pieces pieces for rock bottom prices so I couldn't resist picking up a thing or two from his lot. Of course when all was said and done all the prices were so good that I ended up just piling stuff on. Um, so it, it kind of added up but I am very excited about what is in this box so I'm gonna go ahead and crack it open for you guys right now. Okay, here's a little teaser about what we got within the box. He put these smaller little additions right at the top, so that way they weren't forgotten. But you can see we got Alan Grant right in there, right in the plastic bag after that shark there. And then we've got one more little human figure. It's John Hammond welcoming us to this particular unboxing video. Welcome to Jurassic Box. That's the best John Hammond I can do. Anyway... First thing we got in here, we packed them all so nice, this is going to be a tough unboxing. <laughs> Hold on, let's see what we can do. You can kind of see it peeking through all that bubble wrap that's just been sealed up. Let's get it unwrapped here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to tear the bubble wrap here. Ah, there we go. One half of a dinosaur. <laughs> this is, of course, the PNSO Micro Raptor. Let's see if we can find his butt in here somewhere. This shows promise. And there is the Microraptor rear end. Let's see if we can get them together. All right, and there is the Microraptor all assembled. And I gotta say, out of the box, this thing looks super, super impressive. I love the iridescent color on this thing. Now, Microraptor, it's not really a species I felt all that inclined to get from PNSO, but like I said, the guy was letting go of this stuff for such a low price that I just, I thought, why not complete the PNSO lineup? I think this was actually one of the first that they revealed back in the day, so it's nice to finally have it. And I gotta say, I really like it in person. I think those colors just look fantastic. So, yeah, this is definitely an exciting addition. Alright, another PNSO figure. You can kind of see what we got poking through the bubble wrap here. Let's see if I can get it open. And there is the Adipodentatus, if I am saying that correctly. Yeah, this is another figure that kind of caught my eye, but I was like, I don't know, it's not a dinosaur. I'm none too inclined to get it since it's not a dinosaur, but it's such a weird critter that I was somewhat interested in picking it up. I just didn't want to pay full price for it. So when the guy had it, cheap told him to throw it in there and I'm actually really glad he did. This is such a kooky critter and it looks so great in model form. Definitely not as good as the promo images, but still pretty cool looking in person. So I am super excited to be adding this bizarre critter to the collection. 
but let's see what else we've got waiting for us in this box after the Adipodentatus here. All right, looking like we have another dinosaur back on track here. You can all probably figure out what it is. Dang, he really got this thing sealed up good. I, I mean, I appreciate it. I'm gonna have to use scissors though. I appreciate how well he sealed these things for shipping, but dang, it makes for a very uncomfortable unboxing because I, I have to work so hard at it. You guys just have to sit there and watch. I'll do my best to edit this so that it isn't like super dry, but let's see if we can get this guy out of the bubble wrap. Ah, there we go, and there is the PNSO Machairoceratops. Now, this was a reveal that I was initially super excited for. I thought the promo images looked so cool, and it was a species that I was, until that point, not aware of, so I was super excited for it. But then in hand images showed up, and I was just, I was totally underwhelmed with the finish on this thing. The paint job just falls flat in my opinion but it is a very cool sculpture so when the guy was like yeah you want this one i'm like yes i will take it for the sculpture but i did not want to pay full price for it back when it first dropped because the paint job just turned out so lackluster in my opinion now that i have it it's still kind of underwhelming i'm gonna be honest with you but you know it, it's fine it's cool to have whatever let's move on all right, I think I got one more PNSO figure in here, and this is the one I was actually pretty excited about because it was one that looked pretty good. I just wasn't really prepared to pay the full price for, so let's get him out of the bubble wrap here. There, that was pretty painless. It's Bart the Pinacosaurus. Ah, oh, this thing actually turned out looking pretty great. I really like how this one looks. Uh, would I have spent the $30 to get it? Maybe not, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look really good in person. So yeah, again, just super glad this guy was dropping his collection because I managed to get this thing for, you know, a fraction of the cost and it looks pretty cool. $30 cool? Maybe not, but definitely cool enough to get secondhand. I know I often say that I don't like extant copy and paste paint jobs on dinosaur models, but I actually think it works really, really well on this one. The thorny devil aesthetics on this dinosaur with all those bumps and ridges and armor. I mean, I'd be lying if I said it didn't make sense. So yeah, Bart looks great. The sculptural details are fantastic. And I think the paint job augments that all pretty well, especially when you compare it to some of the other ankylosaurs that uh, PNSO produced earlier in their initial onslaught of figures. But moving on, let's see what else we've got in this box here. What's this one gonna be? Actually, I'm not entirely sure. This one's pretty wrapped up. I can't even get like a peek in there. Like I know what's in the order, but I don't know what order I'm unboxing it in, you know? So I don't know what what this one holds. Let's find out. Oh, no, I do know. I do know. I see it. I see it in there. Come on. Come on. Gonna have to use this one more time. Come on, come on, come on. I want it, I want it. Give it to me, give it to me. Open up, open up. There we go. Here we have, well, I'll show you here in a second. Rebor's Baby Triceratops. I think its name is Hazelnut. This is the only Rebor Triceratops I own but it seems to have dislodged a larger figure. Let's get that one here. And there is the first Nanmu product in the box. It is the Indominus Rex, AKA the Berserker Rex. Now this was another product from Nanmu. I think it was the first one that they released, but 
you know, I love Nanmu. You all know I love Nanmu on this channel. But for whatever reason, this one just never stood out to me as exceptional. I, and I, that might be because they were finding their footing with these Jurassic-inspired products. This one, I think, was a bit of a misfire, but still looked pretty good. I just didn't want to, you know, you're, you're, you're probably picking up on a theme here. I didn't want to pay the full price for it. So when the guy had it for sale, I'm like, well, I better take the opportunity to check this one off the list. And, you know, now that I have it in person, I think it looks pretty good. I gotta say, I love all of the layers of color for an albino creature. That's something that's so hard to get right. And I think Nanmu really balanced it here and delivered on an eye-catching paint job despite how simplistic the color scheme is. So yeah, excited to have that one. Gonna be playing with the bendy tail for a bit here. But next up, looks like we got another Nanmu product. Uh, you can probably tell what it is. I'm gonna have to use the scissors here. I think we might have a bit of an issue with this one though. Nope, gonna use the scissors. Set those there. Yep, okay, yep. I thought so. So yeah, this is the Nanmu Ceratosaurus, but this is not actually the variant that I was hoping to get. He had both of them, and I, I, I was saying, hey, could I get the Jurassic Park 3 inspired one? So, bit of a mix up with this here, but glass half full, this was one of those Nanmu variants that I had a super tough time choosing between. I went back and forth with this one for the longest time. I was like, oh, the blue looks really cool, but the red one's the Jurassic Park version, and I usually tend to lean towards the film counterparts with these Nanmu products. Those are the ones that I prioritize. So that's what ultimately made me ask for the Jurassic Park 3 version, and then he sent me the blue version instead. Um, but it's hard to be upset. Like I said, it was a super cheap price. It was something I wasn't sure, like it was a variant I couldn't really choose between. So I guess this is just a sign that I was always meant to have the blue variant. And I I'm really not that upset about this mix up because I think seeing it in hand, it looks awesome. Maybe someday I'll track down the JP3 style one and add it to co the collection and then just sell whichever one I don't prefer in hand. But for now, this one's looking pretty dope. All right, I think we got one more Nanmu product in here. Let's see if it's going to be next. Hold on, let me get some of this stuff out of the way first. Oh, yep. Oh, yep, there it is. That's the last one. Ah, there we go. The Nanmu Stegosaurus Pike. Of course, this is the Lost World variant. Uh, he had both. I, of course, opted for the movie version. And I gotta say, this thing looks amazing in person. It really captures the likeness of the Lost World Stegosaurus. And I, I just, I'm stoked looking at this thing. The detail is amazing. And the paint job, I know they changed it and there was some hubbub about how they changed the color scheme. I actually think this is closer to the mark. So I am instantly much more excited about this figure now that they have, now after, I was more excited about this figure, I should say, once they changed the paint scheme, I just never got around to buying it. So I was very excited to be adding it to the collection. Nanmu doesn't do herbivores all that often, I feel like, but when they do, I think they nail it and they really brought it with this Stegosaurus. So yeah, another awesome addition to the collection. Super excited for this one. It looks incredible. Okay, next up, I think this is gonna be another Rebore product here. Ah, yep, there it is. There it is. Disassembled, of course, so let me just take a second, pop the tail in here. Wow, that one was actually pretty tough to get on, but there you have the Rebor Bites the Dust Tyrannosaurus Rex Carcass figure. And yeah, this was another product where I'm like, that's kind of cool. I mean, I can see why 
Rebor thought people would want this, um, and obviously I did enough to ask this guy to throw it in for me, but I, again, I didn't want to pay $40 for what was essentially an accessory or a paperweight. Like, like this is an awesome product to have if you're going to pose it next to the Spinosaurus, which of course is the intention, and yeah, I'm not going to lie, that looks pretty awesome. It is a pretty awesome accessory to your collection, but is it a $40 accessory? Not for me when I have other priorities, but I think that it looks really, really cool when you pair it with the Nanmu Spinosaurus or potentially another figure that I have looming in this box that we're going to get to if I don't give too much away. So let's go ahead and move on. Yeah, cool figure, cool, cool idea, but you know, I, not something that was a priority to me, but glad to have it now. Alright, here it is, the big one. You guys can probably tell what is hiding through that bubble wrap, so let's get it open. I'm super excited for this one, definitely. Come on, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate the effort. I really do. But it's making my job hard on this end. Trying to unwrap these things while also filming it and making sure it's on camera. Uh-oh. 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 We seem to have an issue. Despite all that bubble wrap, I still managed to break it somehow. Let's... I'm going to cut real quick, see if I can find that. <laughs> Okay, there is the W Dragon Spinosaurus, and man, does that thing look incredible. I managed to find the Dew Claw and glue it back on. Thank God it didn't get lost or it was an impossible fix. You can see it down there back on the figure. And yeah, altogether, this thing is pretty impressive, not gonna lie. I know in like my Nanmu November review of the Spinosaurus from them, I said I, I felt no particular need to get another JP3 inspired Spinosaurus. But again, this guy's letting it go for cheap. I'm gonna snatch that up and I am so glad that I did. This thing is a powerhouse of a figure. It looks absolutely incredible here on my turntable. I'm sure it's gonna look amazing on the shelf and I'm gonna pose it with that Rex carcass you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to do that and enjoy that view and now that I have them both hmm might be time for another head-to-head -head. I think yeah I think that might have been another uh, motive for snatching this figure up now I'm like I better do this so I can do a head-to-head -head between the Nanmu Spinosaurus and the W Dragon Spinosaurus because when I did my first head-to-head -head between the Nanmu Rex and the Rebor Rex that was the overwhelming re request that I got for the next head-to-head -head. and I'm just like I don't know if I want to spend a hundred dollars on the W Dragon Spinosaurus just so I could make that video but you know this guy's letting it go cheap so golden opportunity I'm gonna take it and here they are standing next to each other and I gotta say this is gonna be a tough tough call they both just look so beautiful next to each other I mean ugh. I can't decide right away. I mean, I think in the honeymoon stage with the W Dragon right now, but we'll see. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below as we move on to the next figure. Yeah, this is another W Dragon. Let's get this one opened. Hopefully this one did not suffer any damage in transit. Honestly, that could have been on me. I was really pulling at that bubble wrap. It might have just caught on that claw and pulled it right off. So, I it, it, again... Hard to be mad. Come on, come on. This is another one that I was pretty excited to see in person. I'd seen videos, I'd seen pictures of it, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to shell out the, you know, $100, $120 or so that this one costs, so 
yeah, definitely was excited that I had the opportunity to pick this one up at a discount. And yeah, there it is. It's the W Dragon Giganotosaurus looking absolutely vicious even when confined to bubble wrap with that striking white eye. Let's get him all the way out. There we go, there is the W Dragon Giganotosaurus, and you know, I think it was actually about a year ago, yeah, that sounds about right, about a year ago, where the first promo images of this thing dropped online, and my initial response to it was that I was really impressed with the color scheme. It's a color scheme I have not seen on a dinosaur, it's a combination of colors you wouldn't think would work, but it actually looked super, super rich and inviting, but yeah, there was just something about it. I was just like, I don't know. It just seems a bit too, you know, kind of uh, out there for my sensibilities. I mean, I know I collect a lot of JP-inspired movie monster dinosaurs, but this one, you know, it didn't have that. I know it's inspired by, like, the Dino Crisis Giganotosaurus or something, but for me, I never played that game, so that one didn't have the nostalgic factor working in its favor. So I had to skip this one but then i saw in hand and i i just kept thinking wow that is a beautiful palette very interesting design nonetheless um but i i just never got around to getting it because of that higher price tag so i was very excited to add this one to the collection and now that i have it yeah i absolutely love this thing i love it, it it's not the best giganotosaurus out there but it's certainly an impressive piece all right, now we're kind of getting down to the dregs here. Let's see what we got in this one. This is another one that's kind of hard to see through. It's so tightly wrapped. Oh wait, no, I do, I see it. I think I know what we're working with here. Yep, there it is. It is the Rebor Dilophosaurus. I can't remember if this is Green Day or Oasis, but yeah, this is the first JP-inspired Dilophosaurus model that I have in my collection. The, the, the only, like, true JP-inspired model. I mean, I know I have the Papa one, and that one's not necessarily scientific, but it's certainly more so than these Rebor ones. Here, here, I got the other one, I think, in hand. Yep, here is the male version of that Dilophosaurus. I believe this is the brighter colored male variant that Rebor intended. And yep, just like the Rex and basically any of the Rebor's theropods, it has a bendy wire tail that comes disconnected. And there they are standing on that super awesome base that they come with. I found that, didn't want to unbag that one on camera. I didn't think you guys wanted to see me unbox a va uh, base, but a vase. Uh, yeah, these guys I think look pretty cool next to each other. Again, awesome, interesting product, but giving Rebor's style, the overuse of texture, you can definitely see that even at a distance. I, I was not too keen on picking these guys up right away, but I am glad to finally have them, if anything, for that awesome base. All right, and I think we've got one more dinosaur in here. I think this, yeah, this one's definitely one more Rebor. Come on. Honestly, that was pretty painless. <laughs> it's, it's the baby Stegosaurus. I believe this one's name is Melon, looking like the jungle variant. And there he is with Hazelnut. I realize I never put Hazelnut up on the turntable for you guys. So there are the two Rebor babies I got in this lot, and they're adorable. Rebor needs to do more of these things. They are just so stinking cute. I absolutely love these two. And I think they're going to look great with the parents, you know, if they ever show up. But anywho, there is the rest of the Rebor gang from this unboxing. You've got the two Dilophosaurus, you've got 
baby melon there and then you've got the bites the dust tyrannosaurus rex and then hazelnut is up there getting some revenge for the fallen queen and hopefully hazelnut's daddy is on the way uh come on rebor get with king trident now that i have the baby like i feel totally reinvigorated to track down the fallen queen and then hopefully by the time i find that we'll be on to king trident but anyway that's Rebor. Then we've got the one, two, three, four PNSO figures, all figures that I was initially, you know, kind of intrigued by, but for whatever reason, be it final price point or final product, I didn't want to pay full price for. So now it's great to finally have the complete PNSO line, and I've already ordered like the Allosaurus and the Car uh, Carcharodontosaurus, so I'm pretty much caught up on PNSO, which is going to change super quick here. And then we have the Nanmu Trio, the Indominus Rex, Ceratosaurus, and Stegosaurus, all three of which look absolutely incredible. I think Nanmu is definitely one of my favorite brands. They're probably my favorite brand for, no, they are not probably, they're easily my favorite brand for pop culture inspired dinosaurs. I, I don't think there's any competition left there. But yeah, now I'm caught up on Nanmu stuff as well until the Bull Rex becomes available and the Baryonyx duo and they just teased a Brachiosaurus, great. And speaking of Brachiosaurus, here are the W Dragon uh, duo that we got, the Spinosaurus and the Giganotosaurus. Honestly, the first W Dragon product I got was their Giraffe Titan, and that one sort of showed me how good their products are, so I was super excited to add a couple more to the collection. Now that they have the license to Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, these might be it for W Dragon products for me. Licensed products, they're going to be so much more expensive, and I'm not going to dump that kind of money into one single figure. So... This might be it for W Dragon, but I think they definitely went out on a high note. I'm super excited to have both of these guys. And there is the entire lot that I picked up from this fellow collector. And wow, yeah, it <laughs> it's a good day for old Killer Shrew fan. This, this just brings me unending joy to look at all this plastic and resin in one place. I don't know where I'm going to put all this stuff. I'm going to have to take the afternoon tomorrow to rearrange and find places on the shelves. You all saw my unboxing video. We were kind of at capacity, so when I find a big box like this, not entirely sure where I'm going to go with all of it, but we will find a way. Life finds a way. Collecting finds a way but yeah i think i'm gonna be on dinosaur hiatus for a little bit now that i've got you know this massive box of figures and um i just got the beast of the mesozoic wave 2 ceratopsian so yeah i think it's safe to say that i'm gonna need a break from ordering dinosaurs so meantime drop a comment down below let me know which figure you want to see a review of i know none of these are necessarily new so you've probably already seen all of them before but if you want to hear my thoughts more in depth on any of these things see them compared to figures whatever the case may be drop a comment down below letting me know thank you all so much for tuning in today and that is going to do it for this unboxing video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you again soon for the next one take care out there and bye bye